Good afternoon and welcome to the Justice Department. Thanks for uh, being here for the Department's announcement of the establishment of the Procurement Collusion Strike Force. Uh, as I'll explain in a moment, the Strike Force is a partnership between the Justice Department's Antitrust Division, multiple U.S. attorneys, offices, the FBI, and several Office of Inspectors General. Before I go any further, I want to thank the Deputy Attorney General, Jeff Rosen, uh, for being here today and for his support for this criminal initiative. On behalf of the Strike Force multiple partner agencies, I extend my thanks to you and the Attorney General for the support of this. And uh, uh, I will now turn to you for your remarks. All right, thank you. I'll be brief. <clears throat> Good afternoon. I'm pleased to join the Department of Justice's announcement today of our Procurement Collusion Strike Force along with Assistant Attorney General Macon Del Rahim of the Antitrust Division, our Inspector General Michael Horowitz, our Deputy Assistant Attorney General Richard Powers, Assistant Director Terry Wade of the FBI's Criminal Investigator Division, as well as 10 members of our U.S. Attorney community and uh, representatives from the offices of the Inspector General of the Department of Defense, the U.S. Postal Service, and GSA. Taxpayers rightfully expect their tax dollars to be spent responsibly, and this administration will not tolerate criminal activity that seeks to profit unfairly at the expense of taxpayers. I'm therefore very pleased to be here today to support the establishment of our Procurement Collusion Strike Force. This strike force will target bid rigging and other antitrust uh, crimes that can cost American taxpayers billions of dollars each year by undermining the federal government's processes for purchasing goods and services and for money granted to states and municipalities to undertake large, high-dollar figure public improvement projects. When government contractors collude with each other to rig bids for government contracts at the federal, state, or local levels, it leads to artificially higher prices for those goods or services. When the government has to pay those artificially higher prices, all American taxpayers wind up paying for it. So as Assistant Attorney General Del Rahim will explain in a moment, the mission of this strike force is to combat this criminal activity by improving how we leverage the collective expertise and capabilities of the Antitrust Division, of our U.S. Attorney's offices, the FBI, and the offices of inspector generals across several key agencies, including the Department of Defense. This new strike force will better inform federal, state, and local government procurement communities about these criminal activities, and importantly, how to detect and report them. The strike force's mission is important work that will benefit all Americans. I would like to thank Assistant Attorney General Del Rahim and his Deputy Assistant Attorney General Powers for their leadership in forming the strike force. I would like to recognize and thank our 13 U.S. Attorney strike force initial partners who have stepped up to the plate by prioritizing this important enforcement effort, including the 10 who are here today. And I would like to thank our colleagues at the FBI, the Department of Defense, and our Inspector General partners, partners whose contributions to this strike force are vital to its success. So I will now ask Assistant Attorney General Del Rahim to further describe for you the new strike force, and I know at the conclusion he will be looking very much forward to answering your questions as well. So thanks very much, everybody, for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you again, Deputy Attorney General Rosen, for not only his support but for being here to show the broad support of the department's leadership. So. Today, I am pleased to announce the establishment of the Procurement Collusion Strike Force. It's a joint law enforcement effort that will combat antitrust crimes and related fraudulent schemes that impact government procurement, grant, and program funding. I want to begin again by thanking the Deputy Attorney General and the Attorney General for their support of this initiative. I specifically want to thank my colleagues and partners who are standing here uh, at, at the stage and who have joined uh, forces to, in creating uh, this strike force and protecting American taxpayers. This strike force is an interagency partnership consisting of prosecutors from the Antitrust Division, 
and prosecutors from a number of key U.S. attorneys' offices from across the country. It also includes investigators from the FBI and four major offices of inspectors general. The strike force will harness the combined expertise and capacity of these partners in order to detect, deter, investigate, and prosecute antitrust crimes and related criminal schemes that undermine the integrity of the government procurement process. Leaders from these partners are here today, and again, I want to recognize them for their commitment to the strike force. Uh, Ten of our 13 initial partners are able to be here. Uh, Jesse Liu from the District of Columbia, who also serves as the chair of the Attorney General's Advisory Committee. Aaron Neely Cox from the Northern District of Texas, who serves as the vice chair of the Attorney General's Advisory Committee. Nick Hanna from the Central District of California. Jason Dunn from the District of Colorado. Ariana Orshan from the Southern District of Florida. B.J. Pack from the Northern District of Georgia, John Lausch from the Northern District of Illinois, Matthew Schneider from the Eastern District of Michigan, uh, William McSwain from the Eastern District of per uh, Pennsylvania, and Zach Twilliger from the Eastern District of Virginia. Although they couldn't be here today, I also want to recognize the steadfast support of Greg Scott, the U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District of California, Jeff Berman, the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York, and David DeVillers of uh, the Southern District of Ohio for their commitment to the strike force. I also want to recognize the FBI and thank Director Chris Ray for his support in forming this strike force. Although Director couldn't be here today, I'm pleased that Associate Deputy Director Paul Abate and Assistant Director of the Criminal Investigative Division Terry Wade are here on behalf of the FBI. Uh, in addition to that, I would be remiss to not mention our key important Inspector General partners in this. Michael Horowitz, the Inspector General of the Department of Justice, and importantly, he chairs the, what we call SIGI, the Council of Inspector Generals on Integrity and Efficiency. Kelly Mayo, the Principal Deputy Director of the Defense Criminal Investigative Service from the Department of Defense uh, Office of Inspector General. Deputy Inspector General uh, William Seamer from the U.S. Postal Service Office of Inspector General and Assistant Inspector General James Adams from the GSA Office of Inspector General. Thank you all for your commitments and resources to support uh, this new strike force, and I look forward to partnering with you. Finally, I want to recognize the key members of the Antitrust Division's uh, team who have helped make, make this possible today. Uh, as the Deputy Attorney General mentioned, uh, my Deputy for Criminal Enforcement, Richard Powers, Deputy Assistant Attorney General Renee Augustine, and uh, William Sloan, who's an accomplished federal prosecutor who's been tireless in making this strike force a reality and will serve as its key coordinator as the strike force's director. In a moment, I'll explain more about the PCSF, uh, its structure, and what it will do. But let me speak to the problem it will address. When competitors in any given industry collude and conspire to rig bids, fix prices, or allocate markets, this is, uh, that is, committing antitrust violations. They distort the free market and harm customers with high prices and lower quality goods and services. This is no less true in the area of public procurement, where the customer is the government and the American taxpayer foots the bill for the artificially higher prices. Let me state the problem in more concrete terms. Roughly one, about, one out of every $10 of federal spending is allocated to government contracting. Last year, the federal government spent more than $550 billion, or about 40% of all discretionary spending, on contracts for goods and services. And federal money for procurement is not limited to federal agencies. It also flows to state and local governments for public works and infrastructure projects. The 2018 federal budget included more than $79 billion in grants to state and local governments to fund major public physical capital investments. Given the large sums of federal money involved in public procurement, it's easy to see how any amount of overcharge caused by illegal bid rigging or other anti-competitive conduct inflicts significant economic harm on the government and the taxpayer. 
We also know from our experience prosecuting these crimes that the problem is a real one. I could but won't detail the extensive history going back decades of prosecuting uh, criminal conduct in this space. Let me share one fact that informs our thinking as we move forward today. Today, more than one third of the antitrust divisions open 100 plus criminal investigations relate to public procurement or otherwise involve the government being the victim by uh, criminal conduct. Uh, let me uh, now turn to what we're doing about this problem and give you an overview of how the procurement collusion strike force will work to protect the integrity of the government procurement process. The strike force has two core objectives. The first is to deter and prevent antitrust and related crimes at the front end of the procurement process through outreach and training. And the second objective is to effectively detect, investigate, and prosecute such crimes that, uh, that do occur through better coordination and partnership in the law enforcement and inspector general communities. I want to talk about several of the key features of this strike force that will allow us to meet these objectives. First, the strike force will conduct targeted outreach training and education to key constituencies in the public procurement field. This outreach will serve both to prevent criminal activity and to identify crimes when they do occur. The strike force will conduct outreach to federal, state, and local government procurement officials to educate them on how to identify potential indicators or red flags uh, to identify the collusion and to assist with structuring their acquisition processes to remove vulnerabilities in the first place. We also will conduct outreach to government contractors, their trade associations, and public contract attorneys in order to educate them about criminal antitrust violations and associated penalties. The division has done similar types of outreach in the past, but I want to highlight a unique aspect of this strike forces structure, which I believe will enhance uh, the effects of our outreach. The strike force will use a district-based organization model, beginning in the 13 partner federal districts, specifically from among our approximately 100 criminal prosecutors, the division has designated trial attorneys to serve as liaisons for each of the 13 partner U.S. attorney's offices. Each participating U.S. attorney has designated at least uh, one U assistant U.S. attorney to serve as a PCSF liaison for that district. The FBI is designating special agents from the field offices in each of the 13 districts to serve uh, as the strike force liaisons. Working together, these teams will lead the outreach training in their districts, focusing on where federal dollars are being spent in each district in order to get the most mileage out of their outreach effects. Let me turn to a second important way the strike force will work to protect the integrity of the procurement process. The strike force will work on ways to improve our use of data analytics to identify potential red flags of collusion in government procurement data. Many investigative agencies individually have made great strides on this front, and the PCSF will serve to facilitate collaboration and the sharing of best practices between these agencies. To that end, the strike force is planning an interagency roundtable for early 2020 to, be, uh, to bring together data scientists from across the law enforcement and inspector general community. Third and finally, the strike force's district-based approach will not start and stop with outreach. When potential illegal antitrust or related conduct is detected, prosecutors and agents from the strike force's district teams will work together to jointly investigate and prosecute such crimes. Leveraging the collaborative expertise and resources of our partners will enable us to maximize our enforcement efforts. To conclude, I want to underscore that criminal antitrust conduct that affects government uh, procurement is a costly problem, and the creation of this strike force marks an important milestone in the federal law enforcement community's efforts to deter and prosecute illegal conduct in this area. Uh, we also have the website. As you can see, there will be some uh, that, that will go public starting today uh, that will include a, uh, a reporting uh, feature for not only citizens but our law enforcement agencies and procurement officials to help us identify uh, 
any potential crimes. I'll now ask uh, the Inspector General uh, Michael Horowitz for his remarks, and then we'll uh, have a couple more folks, and then we'll open it up to some questions. Michael. Thanks. Thank you, AAG Delrahim. Um, it is a pleasure to be here, and on behalf of the IG community, as um, was mentioned, I am the chair of the Council of Inspectors General. Um, contracting fraud, procurement fraud, illegal collusion is a serious problem that we in the IG community um, have been looking to address, have addressed, and continue to seek new ways uh, to improve our efforts um, to address. Um, as you heard, it involves hundreds of billions of dollars each year of taxpayer money going to contracting, and uh, fraud and collusion undermines the bidding processes, undermines ensuring that taxpayers get the best price for the money they're spending, and it needs to be attacked. And we in the IG community certainly look forward to partnering with the U.S. attorneys, with prosecutors across the country, um, with folks from the uh, antitrust division, with folks and agents, law enforcement from the FBI, and with each other in the IG community to address this problem. Um, we work through our audits, through our investigations. We bring to the table data analytics and other tools and expertise that we have in doing the oversight work that each of us do across our agencies to ensure that taxpayer money is well spent. And an important part of that, as you heard, is making sure we're deterring and preventing wrongdoing from occurring before it occurs. We want to uncover it. If it is occurring, we want to fight it. We want to see it prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. But one of our most important goals as inspectors general is to ensure that it doesn't happen and take steps to ensure it doesn't happen. And so we also look forward in working with the strike force in figuring out ways that we can better educate those who seek government contracts to ensure that they understand how to play by the rules. That's a core function also of IGs. We do that, for example, in the grant space already, working closely together to educate uh, grantees and those who are applying for grants, and we look forward to doing that with the strike force in the contracting space as well. So appreciate your including us in this uh, strike force. We look forward to being acting per active participants and to seeing results on behalf of the American public. Thanks. Thank you again. I could ask uh, Assistant Director uh, of the FBI, Terry Wade, for his comments, please. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. Thank you for being here this afternoon. Speaking on behalf of the men and women of the Criminal Investigative Division of the FBI, I'm excited to be here as part of this important announcement. I want to thank our partners at the Department of Justice, and we look forward to our participation in the strike force. The FBI recognizes that price fixing, bid rigging, and market allocation schemes deprive consumers of true competition within the market. And this is a matter of significant importance to the overall health of the United States economy. In 2015, recognizing the threat of anti-competitive behavior globally, the FBI established three international corruption squads, and we added another squad in 2019 due to the volumes of cases that we took in. We're now happy to extend these efforts even further with our participation in this strike force. This growing and evolving threat makes cooperation with our domestic partners even more vital as we move forward. Together, we'll be able to share best, pra best practices, coordinate closely with our federal, state, and local partners, and grow in our capability to respond to these evolving threats. This strike force is the realization of years of strong cooperation between the FBI and DOJ's antitrust division. And this is an important step in the future of responding to these violations. By creating regional teams of select FBI agents, DOJ attorneys, and assistant United States attorneys, along with other federal partners, we will have specialized groups of dedicated individuals who will proactively meet the threat within their areas of responsibility. As the assistant director of the Criminal Investigative Division, I have firsthand seen our International Corruption Unit take aggressive and innovative steps to combat threats within, this pur within its purview, in large part through the development of the strong relationship with the Department of Justice. DOJ Antitrust is well positioned to aggressively tackle these violations and anti-competitive behaviors. 
Additionally, we partner with them to directly interact with the public and private sector in a variety of forums to encourage self-reporting and greater recognition of illegal, illegal contact within these industries. This partnership has been successful in the past and the strikes force will certainly strengthen the partnership and lead to continues, continued successes as we move forward. Again, I want to thank you for this opportunity and we look forward to our continued successes. Thank you very much. We're also pleased to have with us the Principal Deputy Director of the Defense Criminal Investigative Service, Kelly Mayo. I could ask you your remarks. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. In this case, amongst this august body, last really is least, so you got to look forward to. <laughs> My special assistant told me, he said, the boss, you like to talk a lot. You need to keep your comments real short, so I'm going to do that. He wrote this for me, and he did a wonderful job. And as uh, Mr. Delrahim said, I'm with the Department of Defense, so I'll read these and I have the, a little personal announcement afterwards. So good afternoon. On behalf of the Defense Criminal Investigative Services Workforce, I'd like to offer my sincere thanks to the Department of Justice for spearheading this important initiative. It was, collaborative, it, was, it, was, it was with collaboration with the Department of Justice and our longstanding partnership with superb agencies like the FBI and various OIGs that we realize investigative success as do our partners. DCS is committed to protecting the integrity of our federal procurement processes and ensuring the continued safety and security of our warfighters. This relevant and vital stri strike force will endeavor to do just that. We are proud to be a part of this significant undertaking and share the confidence of our partners that this will be Im impactful. Thank you. Now on a personal note, because this is probably my last opportunity, and I have this august body here, in my 43 years of the Department of Defense, the only reason I've enjoyed any success is because of these types of people. The military JAG Corps, I know I'm going off script, I apologize, but I have the microphone, and, and the various U.S. Attorney's Offices and the Department of Justice. And I'd like to thank them all personally, first of all, for your incredible public service. I appreciate it a great deal. It means a lot to me as a guy in the Department of Defense. And thank you for your constant commitment to us, and thank you for giving me any success I've ever had. And uh, last, thank the press for coming. Your time is the most valuable asset, and you've chosen to spend with us. So thank you very much, and thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Uh, it's been a great honor working with you and, the, and your colleagues, Department of Defense, and all of our other uh, partners, particularly in the Korea fuels matter. Uh, I am, again, grateful, personally grateful for all of our colleagues from the U.S. Attorney's offices and the inspectors general's community. Uh, who have joined us today. Uh, they have uh, agreed to be open to a number of questions. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have that uh, we can answer for you uh, for this. So. Yes. Uh, I'm Julia Ainsley with NBC News. Um, two logistical questions. One, just you're talking about, I want to figure out how many resources are being devoted to this. So it says there's additional funding to the PCSF. Do you have a number in mind? And then also, if I may ask Inspector General Horwitz if he has an updated timeline on when we could expect to see uh, the report into um, the origins of the Russia uh, Thanks for the first question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the Inspector General is delighted to answer any questions I, about I the strike force. To the second question. Yeah, that's I'm sorry I can't answer that question. Yeah. Uh, but now a bunch of people's hands are not going to go So <laughs> we have, you know, uh, through the great support of the Deputy Attorney General and the Attorney General, uh, we have been able to be allocated some additional funds uh, to support this, and it's less than, a, you know, less than a million dollars that came out of certain discretionary funds to support this for, uh, uh, for recovery of taxpayer losses. Uh, the idea of this strike force is really, this is the first time you know, the antitrust division has monopolized antitrust enforcement over the years. We have not shared it with our great partners in the U.S. Attorney's offices. So uh, we thought that this made a lot of sense. These are some of the most uh, capable, not only prosecutors themselves, but the offices that they lead have some of the best lawyers. And we thought this was a way to partner with them and their resources to be able to do this. It's going to be a virtual strike force. It's not housed in any particular place for, by design. And so I think th that particular design is what's going to lead to uh, its success. 
Um, so, in the past three fiscal years, the division has brought fewer criminal antitrust prosecutions than at any point since the 1970s. And so, I wanted to ask, A, why has there been that drop-off, and B, is this designed to turn that around? Uh, could you Thanks for that. I read your story this morning when it was forwarded over to me uh, with some surprise. I'd be happy to uh, engage with you about the exact uh, statistics that matter here. Uh, criminal prosecutions have a gestation period. So I think you've seen in the last three fiscal years prosecutions going forward um, in a number of, uh, in, and also, as I mentioned, we have over 100 open investigations. So we are constantly uh, improving our uh, capabilities to prosecute these types of crimes. We have not turned away. Uh, a crime that has been brought to us or we have been able to detect. Of course, this is one way, as was the um, compliance program we announced in July, to continue to help us recover uh, or de detect the types of activities that goes on where the taxpayer is a victim. Mike? Yeah, um, sorry, I just have a question for the IG. Could you explain to the public why it is that you won't say <clears throat> when the report on the FISA process is coming out? And have you uncovered any criminal wrongdoing during that investigation? Uh, I'm not here to talk about the uh, FISA review, so I'll defer back to. Thanks. Uh, hi, Mr. Delahim, uh, Christopher Kane with PAR. I'm wondering if, um, if evidence of bid rigging and crimes involving uh, government contracts arises in the context of merger reviews, and if there are certain industries that should be more aware of this. So a lot of times, uh, merger investigations lead to other investigations that we have. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, you know, the tuna prosecution that is going on in San Francisco right now, we are prosecuting, as you know, the CEO of Bumblebee Tuna that came out of an attempted merger of two of the big players there, and we uncovered documents. Uh, the most recent no-poach uh, investigations we had dealt with the WAPCO merger, where we uncovered the information. So sometimes they come through that. A lot of times they come through our amnesty program and are brought to our attention. Frank? Um, you mentioned that briefly the, the South Korea fuel supply cases. There was a reference to the, the international corruption squads. I mean, how much of this is a international thing versus a you know, domestic company thing? Uh, so it, this, is, this specific initiative is focused on the domestic markets. Uh, of course, we may uncover a procurement collusion uh, on you know, DOD contracts that will serve um, uh, contracts for uh, services abroad. Korea Fuels is a perfect example of that uh, because we had some domestic players, but largely there were uh, South Korean companies who engaged in price fixing of fuels to the Department of Defense. Uh, but this is specifically targeted not only to the local domestic federal agencies, and hence the IGs, but also at the state and uh, local levels. Uh, there's a lot of money, as I mentioned uh, in the opening remarks, that goes from the federal government that goes down there. And uh, we are able to now expand the reach of the criminal prosecution with the partnership of these initial uh, U.S. Attorney's offices. You mentioned earlier that 20% um, your goal was to reduce procurement costs of, by 20%. Is that uh, the amount of fraud that you believe exists in the system of the 550, and could you tell us how you got to that number? So the uh, OECD, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, had done a study, uh, and they had estimated the potential harm to the taxpayer to be about 20 percent of overcharges. I don't really know. We're going to have ver a very specific measurement metrics in our process, in our, uh, in the strike forces uh, activities, we're going to measure that. A lot of times, uh, you know, when, when you have collusion, you try to uh, estimate the amount of damages for the purposes of sentencing and, and also recovery. Um, so we will see. The other thing I should mention is that, um, is that uh, our Section 4A of the Clayton Act, Congress gave us the power to recover 
treble damages for the taxpayers. We have not used that authority. We used it in the Korea fuels to recover over $200 million, where we become the plaintiffs on behalf of the taxpayer. Uh, we intend to fully use those authorities uh, in the strike force when we uncover collusion where the taxpayer is a victim. So we hope to recover not only criminal penalties, but civil damages for, for the taxpayer. Great. Thank you very much for, uh, for being here, and thank you again to our partners.